Okay, so we're going to have a look at probability tree diagrams. And essentially the problem we're going to look at is how to reverse the order of a probability tree. So here we've got a probability tree set up so that A happens or doesn't happen first, and then next it gets decided whether or not B happens. But given this information and these probabilities, what we're going to be interested in is can we draw a new tree diagram now so that basically B is decided first, and then we want to set this up so that we can work out the probability of A next. Okay, so first thing we can do towards solving this problem is we can actually calculate the probability of B to get a label for this branch here. So the probability of B happening, well A happens, then B happens, you multiply these along the branch, you get PQ. But then B can also happen here, so you need to do 1 minus P times R. And then finally you add these two together, so you get PQ plus 1 minus P into R for the probability of B happening. And then you can do the same sort of trick for probability of not B. So here again you multiply along the branch P times 1 minus Q. And here you've got 1 minus p times 1 minus r, and you add these two together. So you get p to 1 minus q plus 1 minus p 1 minus r is your probability of b not happening. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. But then we need to have a think if we're going to now work out what's the probability of a happening after b happens. Or a not happening, and then the same where B hasn't happened. It's not immediately obvious how to just read this off from the diagram. So what we'll do is we'll leave that, put that to one side for now, and then we'll come back to that later. What we can do is we can work out the final labels, like the ones I've circled here. So for the first one, the probability of A happening and B happening is just the same as here, PQ. So the probability of B happening and A happening, this is just the probability of A and B which is just equal to PQ again. So here, the probability of B happening and A not happening, this is just the same as A not happening and B happening, which is 1 minus PR. And then here, B not happening and A happening, so there we do P times 1 minus Q, so you've got P into 1 minus Q. And finally, at the bottom, you've got B complement, A complement. So neither of these happening. 1 minus P times 1 minus R. And now, this actually gives us enough information to fill in these remaining branches. What are the probabilities there? Because we know that see, this probability times whatever goes here. So if I want to call this X just now, so this times by X needs to be equal to PQ. Let's write this out over here. PQ plus 1 minus PR all multiplied by x needs to be equal to pq. So then just simply divide by everything here. You get x equals pq all divided by pq plus 1 minus pr. So now let's label that on. So this new probability here is pq over pq plus 1 minus pr. And we can do the same sort of trick for these remaining three branches as well, where Basically all we've done is divided this final probability by this starting one. So here we're going to do 1 minus P times R. And then all divided by the same probability here, PQ plus 1 minus P into R. And we can do the same thing down here. Do P 1 minus Q over P 1 minus Q plus 1 minus P 1 minus R. And then for the final one, of course, you could do 1 minus this big probability here, but why do that when you can just read off? So we do this divided by the initial probability. And you'll, when you expand the brackets, you can show that these are going to be equivalent. So 1 minus P, 1 minus R, all divided by P into 1 minus Q plus 1 minus P, 1 minus R. And there you go, we've successfully reverse the order of this probability tree. So it started off where A is decided first and then B gets decided. 
to here, we've now flipped this and we've worked out what all the probabilities need to be. And what I find interesting about this is actually what we've done is effectively we've done some quite advanced probability just using this sort of simple tool that we all learn about in school. So what we've effectively done is if you think what we've got here, this is the probability of B given A is Q. And then here we're trying to work out what is the probability of A given that B happens. And of course you can do this without reference to a tree diagram. You can use Bayes' theorem. So you can write this as the probability of A given B is the probability of B given A multiplied by the probability of A and then divided by the probability of B where we can actually split up the probability of B as well using the law of total probability. So this becomes the probability of B given A multiplied by the probability of A plus the probability of B given not A again multiplied by the probability of not A. So what we've done is effectively we've done this really quite complicated looking calculation here using Bayes' theorem and using the law of total probability but just using this simple tree diagram, this tool that we learn about in school.